I'm Jeremy Scott. I'm a tarot coach, spiritual philosopher, and an intuitive thinker. And I'm using this platform to raise awareness that as the Earth re-emerges from everything that's been going on recently into perhaps a new way of living, what do we need to do? What direction are we going to go in so that we can all live together in a more peaceable, unifying, nurturing and cooperative way so that we can focus on the things that bring us together rather than the things that divide us? So I'm using this platform to raise awareness about these issues and others that are related to that. Welcome to Re-Emerging Earth. You know, when people go away on holiday, let's say just for a day trip, they may spend several hours traveling to get to their destination, either by train or by car, perhaps even flying or going by boat. Yet when they get to the destination, they may only spend three or four hours there before making their way back home. And why is that? Why spend all that time to get there and then all that time to come back just for a few hours? Well, I believe that it's about the journey. Because on the way there, you have that sense of excitement. You're going somewhere either new or, you know, somewhere that you haven't been to for a while. Somewhere that you enjoy going to. And you have that sense of excitement that you're going to see new things or things to see what's changed. Whether it's on the coast or in a forest or in a mountain area or wherever it happens to be. And when you're there... You have a look round. You see the things that you want to see. You spend some time perhaps looking round, walking round, sitting in the sun perhaps, or having something to eat and drink before you decide to make the journey home. And even there, there's a sense of excitement or expectation because you're going back to a safe place. You're going back to your home where you know that you have your own four walls so to speak and you're safe there. You're not in danger or you shouldn't be in danger in your home. So it's the journey both there and back. Being there at your destination enjoyable as it is, in my opinion, is not as exciting as the expectation of going there than the relief and expectation of returning home. If you think about it, if you go somewhere and you say travel several hours and then you're going to be there for days, weeks, years, at some point that novelty is going to wear off. Unless you're doing other activities on a regular basis, which is why these package holidays provide entertainment for their customers over the 7, 10 days, 14 days, or whatever they have them within their care. Yes, there are those who will just prefer to lie around in the sun or do the wrong thing during that time. But these tour companies and so on provide us entertainment to keep people excited, I suppose, in that sense. To keep them interested while they're there. Otherwise, a sense of boredom could very well sit in or set in, I should say. That 
for me also just as an aside kind of deflates the idea of working your way through a spiritual practice whether that's within an organized religion or otherwise to get to the end result which is supposed to be like a nirvana or a heaven or some such thing because what do you do then uh, sitting around on a cloud playing a harp all day long year long life long there's more to it than that I'm sure and it's my belief that there is a lot more to it because in, in the spiritual world there are those who are perhaps resting for a while before their next assignment if you like and that could be coming back to earth in some form as in human form or yeah perhaps other incarnations nothing's been proved or they have some other kind of task or project that they undertake perhaps as a guide to help others here on this planet or perhaps also in other planets and in other dimensions we can't really discount anything <laughs> to be honest but that's all part of their journey and it's an ongoing journey journeys for me are cyclic as well as peaks and troughs you have the peak of excitement then you go down into the trough of as the novelty wears off going into a kind of complacency getting used to the situation then you have the peak of excitement because you're going back home then you're going back into the trough of everyday life it's also cyclic in the sense of you've been you, know, you go on the journey you're there and you return and then you look forward to the next time you can go away on a journey for me I think my spiritual journey probably started when I was very young I didn't know I was on a journey then <laughs> I didn't even know I was on a quest or anything like that I just enjoyed going to Sunday school and enjoyed going to the church later on and meeting the people there and associating with them and I'd come home and you know to be go back to the humdrum life of school homework and <laughs> things like that and look I would look forward then to maybe a book study or a Bible study or something in the local church that I went to during the week didn't always go there or it'd be the next Sunday and I'd walk out in those days and walked everywhere you know if it I'd walk to the church it could be two or three miles away I'd enjoy the walk I'd be looking forward to it I'd perhaps perhaps even be singing hymns my favorite hymns in my mind or in my head as I went along maybe out loud as well in some cases and you know even while I was there because I got used to it it wasn't always exciting you know I wasn't really learning anything new there's a lot of it the teachings and so on were repeated but the, the enjoyment came from perhaps the music and the song that made it for me as well or later on when I was able to actively uh, contribute by doing scripture reading and things like that that's when I was very young later on in life I moved away from that you know church and things like that the only time I went to a church during my military career especially was perhaps Christmas to sing carols or go to you know uh, elderly residence home to sing Christmas carols and things like that which I enjoyed I enjoyed that very much in doing that but attending regular church service and, and things like that kind of just dropped by the wayside faded away and then I moved on and later perhaps decades later I really started in earnest on my 
spiritual journey. Although again, I didn't look upon it as a journey or a quest, more like a, a searching, a searching for a better way of living, not just for myself, but also for others. Because I was unhappy with the state of the world, the way things were. And I grew up in Belfast, Northern Ireland. I saw the start of the troubles. I lived through a good part of those troubles. I served there as a soldier during those times. And I've been back since. The war was during this time of peace is taking place only to notice that that peace is very, very thin. That there is still a very strong undercurrent of sectarianism. And it's obviously a lot of that could well be coming from the generation that I grew up with and those shortly after. But they're still infusing that sense into their kids, grandkids and so on. It is getting better. It's, it's opening up more. I mean, <clears throat> if I think about my time growing up in Belfast, I didn't know what racism was because we didn't see anybody of a different colour, apart from maybe at the doctors or the hospital where we had perhaps uh, a doctor of Asian origin or perhaps if we went to a Chinese takeaway you know, we can get some chips or something. Chinese chips. Or the odd, very rare Indian restaurant. You know, they weren't so common as they are now. I didn't meet my first black person. As they call it, you know, black is a shade, but never mind. In this day and age, we call it a colour. So I didn't meet my first black person until I was 15. And I was at a summer job working for a local newspaper, delivering newspapers to shops and stuff, big bundles. And one of the guys I worked with, he was a driver, took me home to meet his adopted son, who's an African lad. And we got on great. I think the idea was for us to become friends. I don't think it worked out simply because we lived on separate sides of the city. So it was a bit of a haul, even in those days, to uh, travel because certain areas were a little bit more dangerous than others, shall we say. But, you know, I still had no idea, even at that age, what racism was. I knew about sectarianism. I, know, I knew about being prejudiced against other forms of the same religion, which kind of, even back then, had me thinking, what on earth is going on? Why do we have this hate for one, in, one another, you know, for each other when we worship, we're supposed to be worshipping the same God with the same religion? It's supposed to be Christianity. I could never understand it. And I think that maybe would have been a turning point for me that I moved away from anything to do with church, organised religion and so on. I would revisit later on, but by trying different routes, not the not the religion that I was brought up with, but or the, the form or the faith I was brought up with, whatever, I would try different paths. I'd try perhaps Pentecostal or other fundamentalist religions. I think I mentioned in the first episode I spent 14 years as a Jehovah's Witness. And that was a journey in itself. I learnt a lot from that. I became a much better person because of that, even though I didn't fully agree with all their teachings and eventually left of my own accord. So journeys, spiritual journeys even, are cyclic. They are also peaks and troughs. And for me, the peaks and troughs were the excitement of learning something new, then the trough was to find out there was no different from anything else I'd learned before. It was just packaged differently. Then I'd find something else and go up in a peak again. You know, and I'd end up going round and round in circles in that way as well. It wasn't until, oh, I think, 
early 2000s when I started to look at Reiki and mindfulness, started to look at Buddhism and other world religions that I started to develop a sense of a spiritual journey. That spiritual journey also included personal development and growth, which had already started in the 90s, listening or uh, reading, or listening and reading such greats as Jim Rohn and Zig Ziglar and Brian Tracy and so on. So developing that positive mental attitude, which certainly helped me through many, many ordeals and challenges that I had over the years. It was all part of the same journey. I didn't realize it. It's only now, really, when I look back and reflect on my journey, that I could see that how things served their purpose for a time, then I moved on, closing that cycle, started a new cycle, and moved on to the next thing which would add a deeper element to what I was learning. And I'm no means, by no means finished. I've still got a good way to go yet. <laughs> There'll be no enlightenment in this body <laughs> for a long time, oh, if ever. And I guess, you know, we are all on that same kind of journey in some way, shape or form. We may not realize it. If you're listening to this podcast and you are like me, perhaps searching for some way that you can really be of benefit to others. How to help others to get out of the rut of life, to escape the rat race, the maze that's used to control us, to pigeonhole us, to make us conform to various ideals and beliefs which in reality are of no benefit or very little benefit at all. That's not to say that the different religions and so on are useless because they're not because they have very good teachings and certainly being who I am and what I've learned and well versed in the teachings of Jesus and many of the prophets, King Solomon and, and others and you know, Ezekiel and so on, the Apostle Paul, very well versed in those teachings and how they are so useful for us in the way that we live. My objection, if you like, is where they say those teachings come from. You know, they've tried to pin it down and put it in a pigeonhole. It doesn't work like that. You can't put the entity known as God in a pigeonhole. Because that entity is in all of us. We are God. God is us in that way. And you can have various names for, for that entity. And yes, I do believe there is a, an ultimate source of all these things. Who that is? I have no Scooby-Doo's. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. I only know that I believe in that. You know, and for me, I like to personalize it. I like to say that uh, it's an entity that I know as Jehovah. I'm not saying I'm still a Jehovah's Witness, because I'm not. I'm just using that as a name to personalize that, because I'd rather have it on a more personal level, rather than some kind of untouchable, whimsical deity, you know, abstract thought pattern or whatever of what a deity is supposed to be. God, in and of itself, is a title. It's not a name. You know? It's like having prime ministers and presidents, chancellors, just titles. So that, in and of itself, I wouldn't say a meaningless title so much as it's 
as a name certainly meaningless because it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. So the spiritual journey can certainly be cyclic. When you look back, take time to look back over your life. Look at the highlights. Look at the distance that you've come. Look at the things that you've done. Look at the things that you've learnt along the way and how they fit into what you're doing now. That will also give you an idea of where you need to go. What lessons do you need to learn? I'm also very much of the opinion that we are on this journey, not just in this particular lifetime, but over several lifetimes. Because there are many things that we need to learn, many things that we need to atone for, many things that we need to rectify because of certain choices that we made in other lives, karmic lessons and the like. And we may not achieve everything in one lifetime, we probably won't. It would be very surprising if we did. Even the Buddha didn't achieve everything in his lifetime. It took him many years to realize that what he was chasing was impossible to reach. So then he just allowed it to flow over him. He let go. That's when he sat under the tree and that's when true inspiration, his intuition and everything really opened up and he started to discover who he really was. But he didn't regret everything he had done before, all his traveling, all his searching, all his learning. That was all part of the journey. That was part of his spiritual journey. And he enjoyed that. He didn't regret it because he knew where it fitted in to his life. It was part of his purpose, part of his potential to be awakened in that way. But he also knew that in this lifetime, he would not achieve enlightenment. I think it was he himself who also said, if you think you're enlightened, you're not. So, and I'm just paraphrasing there, obviously. So a spiritual journey isn't something that we start and finish in a number of hours and then return back to the where we were and starting again. A spiritual journey is something that's an ongoing experience. It's ongoing. It's peaks and troughs and peaks and troughs and peaks and troughs. Cycles after cycle after cycle after cycle. But those peaks and troughs, just like the same kind of graph for success, the peaks get sharper and the troughs get shallower. So therefore, over time, to reach the peaks, it takes less time. And that could be, as I say, over several lifetimes. You may experience some of that in this lifetime, maybe because of past work that you've done in other lifetimes. It's a wonderful feeling to know that when you're on this journey it's always a journey of excitement because you don't know what you're going to learn next you don't know what's going to be around the corner you don't know where your destination is or where it's going to end in some ways it can be like a never-ending traffic jam because you're going to get periods of boredom and frustration and wonder what's it all about? Why? Why am I even bothering? And then something will happen and you'll get a little breakthrough and you're so full of joy and happiness because you've got that breakthrough. That's the different cycles within the journey. That's the different peaks and troughs within the journey. So enjoy, enjoy your spiritual journey. Never give it up. 
look back on your lives like I said and see the highlights or see areas in your life where you can really highlight and say yeah that's where I had a breakthrough or yeah that's been part of my journey there yes I went through that challenge that trauma that horrible experience for a reason because it served a purpose it taught me a lesson and that's what all these things in life are about they're they're about teaching us lessons helping us to grow and become better helping us to be even more improved (laughs) you get these adverts for soap powder and things even more improved you know this is the ultimate ultimate (laughs) things like that but that's what life is about teaching us lessons like that and Eckhart Tolle talks about this as well that the wrongness in life is perfect in that way because it is teaching us lessons if everything was perfect in our lives as he would say well we'll be looking around and uh, isn't anything gonna happen Uh, it'd get boring the novelty would wear off as I said earlier on and we'd get so complacent with it that we'd, we'd need a new journey to bring back some excitement into our lives so yes look back across your life if you've kept journals read through your journals to see what kind of days you've had what time of experiences that you may have forgotten or put to one side and appreciate all the lessons that you have learned and give thanks for that to source to spirit to the universe to whoever it is that you speak to on a regular basis be that God or deity or whoever it happens to be for you and be grateful for your journey and carry on with your journey and do your best to get as far along in this life with your journey as you can think about who you're going to be in the next life do you really want to burden them with everything that you couldn't be bothered to do in this life (laughs) I don't want to put you under pressure (laughs) perhaps I shouldn't have said that but yeah you can think of it in that way so enjoy your spiritual journey as I've come to realize to enjoy mine I didn't always appreciate it all the different things that I went through over the years and I'm sure you don't either but when you look at it from that point of view that it is part of your growing up if you like your learning your maturing then you will appreciate it more that's it for this time look forward to having a chat with you once again very soon bye now <laughs>